Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up, the North Sea wind industry is growing fast, but could so-called wind droughts threaten that expansion? We have some evidence that the droughts could become a little bit more uh, frequent in the future, still very much uncertain. Uh, we need to be prepared for them anyway. First, let's check the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service, showing that March 2023 was 0.5 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. That makes it the joint second warmest March on record. If we look now at the temperature anomaly map, we can see how much warmer it was across a large area of the planet. The red band on this map shows the higher temperatures for March all the way from Morocco down to Japan. There were many new temperature highs for the month. For example, the beach resort of Agadir hit 38.9 degrees at the end of March. And earlier in the month, Wuhan in China hit 26 degrees. That's 12 degrees above average for this time of year. Meanwhile, it was colder across parts of the western United States and Canada. San Francisco dropped to 5.5 degrees Celsius on the 27th of March, the lowest it's been on that day since 1898. Well, let's switch now over to the precipitation figures. And here in Europe, all those areas in blue on this map were wetter than average last month from Ireland and France in the west to Russia in the east. Turkey had the highest rainfall while it rained or snowed less than average in most of southern Europe. Well, that precipitation anomaly is partially mirrored in the soil moisture anomaly map. We can see that the soil in much of the Iberian Peninsula is considerably drier than average for this time of year. Now to our report, and we're asking if so-called wind droughts could limit the potential of Europe's offshore wind sector. It comes as several EU countries are implementing ambitious plans to turn the North Sea into a green energy powerhouse. Paul Hackett has this report from Denmark. Aceberg on Denmark's North Sea coast is at the epicentre of Europe's offshore wind energy industry. It's the continent's hub of expertise and with the EU keen to deliver on climate promises and wean itself off Russian hydrocarbons, business is booming. The demand is exploding and looking forward, we already know now that in 25 we are sold out. The ambitions by the governments, by the big energy companies are there. We know there is a demand for offshore wind and that's very steady for the next 8-10 years. The North Sea is one of the windiest places on Earth and by the end of this decade, the goal is for offshore wind to generate 65 gigawatts or the equivalent of 30 nuclear reactors. But what might happen if climate change were to cause the wind speed to drop? Climate change definitely can have an impact on wind variability. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, we should say, between the models. But they seem to show a slight increase uh, in, in variability, especially a bit more wind droughts. The areas in blue on this map show that the UK and Ireland experienced well below average wind speeds between July and September in 2021. What will happen if this trend continues? We are prepared for them already now because we already see them now. We have ways of managing that. And even if they become a little bit more frequent in the future, we have the technologies to cope with it. One way the industry is attempting to keep the turbines turning is to make them more efficient. At lower wind speeds, turbines produce less power, but we can change the design so we have a bigger rotor compared to the generator. And then it meets the rated power sooner at a lower wind speed. And it means that it produces more constant power even at lower wind speeds. In the years ahead, our ability to measure and assess wind variability will be vital. Having reliable data about possible wind droughts will be crucial for effective supply management with wind being just one component in a broader, renewable European energy system. Well, that's all we have time for. You can read more about how and why our planet is changing on euronews.com slash climate now. I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.